finds it really hard to access her inner wisdom. It doesn't come from her, her head. She doesn't trust it. So part of the work with Julie was how do we get her to figure out that the rest of her is really wise as well? She, she, by her own admission, suffers from anxiety, and sometimes Julie will dissociate. So, the, so the, when the emotion starts to get really intense, rather than feel it, she'll run away from it. And it's really, really hard on her. So this particular, this particular day, Julie wanted to do an equine-facilitated coaching session, thought that it would be good. She was feeling off and not really knowing why, and in her head about what she thought it could be, so I agreed, let's do, let's do the session. So when we start a session, there's a way that we do something called meet the herd, whereby Julie was introduced to the entire herd and she made a connection with Echo, the horse that she wanted to work with. And so once we got through that part of the process, um, we go out back where there's a big round pen and the work is done in the round pen. And the way it works is the horse handler brings the horse that the person has chosen that they want to work with to the round pen, and the horse generally waits for the client to, and I to finish our work out front, and then the client jo joins the horse in the round pen. So Julie had her back to the, to the round pen and to the horse, and I was coaching her to drop down into her body to identify the sensations that she was feeling, to try to name the emotion, energy in motion, and to try to hear the wisdom of her body. Out of your head, into your body, what is your body saying to you? And she was really struggling with this. Now what she, I could see, but she couldn't, is that all of a sudden Echo was turning himself inside out. He was bucking and he was kicking and he was rolling and he was flailing. And my head said, you can't use him. But then I realized that was my head. So I took a big deep breath, got really, really quiet, dropped down into my own body and heard this very loud, trust me, I've got this trust the process. So that's what I decided to do. So I said, Julie, turn around and take a look at Echo. And Julie said to me, oh my God, that is exactly how I feel. I feel as though I am trapped inside my body and all of this is going on and I don't know how to escape. And he knows that. And the minute that she said that, Echo went It was just as if someone had given him a tranquilizer. And he walked over to the edge of the round pen where she and I were, and he put his head down, and he started to lick and chew, which is something that they do when they're relaxed. So I turned her around again, asked her to close her eyes, and finished getting her ready to go into the round pen with him. When we were done, I said to her, are you ready to go in and see him? And she said, yes. He walked over to her. He wrapped himself around her. And she said it was as if she had had the most intense connection and spiritual connection with another sentient being that she'd ever experienced in her life. And what she realized in that moment was when she was able to trust herself, it enabled her to trust him and that trust formed that bond. And what she thought was going on with her wasn't what was going on with her at all. And she realized that she had been holding on to all of this tension related to a conversation that she had not been able to have with someone in her life that was really important to her. And all of that came up through this session that she had with Echo. And because she trusted him and trusted his strength and felt so safe with him that she was able to come out of that round pen, feel like she was completely accepted for who she was and what she was bringing to the table, came out and was able to have that conversation with the, 
with the, the person that she needed to talk to, and something very significant changed for her. That, that couldn't have happened if I hadn't trusted myself. And that, that's what this is really all about. Ken spoke about the intuition. We spend so much of our time in our head and not realizing that the rest of us has some ver something very important to say. And when we learn to lean into that and learn to lean into those sensations and understand that that's energy and that energy is, is what produces the emotion and it's very rich and very real, then we can live in, in such a fulsome and a different way. And I want to finish off by telling you just another really quick story about a, a woman. We'll call this woman Julie as well. Different woman. Um, came to me to do a session, um, spent a couple of days doing work around compassion fatigue. And compassion fatigue is something that happens to caregivers, uh, vicarious trauma, something that happens to caregivers when they spend a lot of time looking for other people, looking after other people. And she also chose to work with Echo. And what, what amazes me is when we do this meet the herd thing, the people choose the horse that they need to work with. If people have boundary issues, they're always working with Oliver because Oliver pushes, no, Oliver's gonna push your boundaries every single time, Oliver will push the boundaries. People have boundary issues, they always pick Oliver. People have trust issues, they always pick Echo. It's, a, it's fascinating to me. Anyway, she, um, she we, were, we had done all of our work, we were in our session, we, I thought we were done. She thought we were done. And the horse handler, who happened to be my husband Wayne, was taking Echo back to the, field with the rest of the horses. And Echo wouldn't go. And so again, I got really quiet and I listened. And what came was, she's not done. She's not done. I need to go back with her. She's not done. So I said to Wayne, she's not done. So I said, well, what are we going to do now? So let's do some reflective grooming. So we got her all the grooming tools and she started to groom the horse. And I'm holding on to Echo. And he looked at me with this, you're in the way. So he gently nudged me aside. He positioned himself between her and me so that I couldn't see her. And he was her protection, wrapped himself around her. And everything that she had been holding on to related to grief, out it came. She had no idea that that was what was there for her that was what came up and what she needed to work with. But Echo knew. Again, trusting him to do his work enabled her to do hers. And when they were done, he just walked away. And he said, now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to go back. So the lessons in this for me, working with Julie, who, who the first Julie really was Julie, and the second woman, who I'll call Juzy, Julie, to protect her, to protect her, to protect her um, anonymity. The message for me is all about trust, trusting what we all have that Ken just talked about, what we all have inside, but we've lost our ability to be able to access it because we spend so much time thinking. Not making thinking wrong. That's part of the picture. It's part of what we need but enabling ourselves to access the rest of our being so that we can really live wholesome, full, and complete lives. And that's the invitation. That's the invitation is to, can we figure out how to listen so that we can really trust ourselves and lead a full life. Thank you very much.